This is a five minute tutorial on the Karish Kuntucker conditions for, this is just for equality constraints. We're gonna show an example for equality constraints, but develop uh, the KKT conditions for inequality or equality constraints. So here's a general form that we have with an objective function. We have some inequality constraints, and then we also have equality constraints that we're interested in solving. And so KKT conditions give us the optimality conditions of where we can find a local minimum to this problem. Okay, so these are the four optimality conditions. First one is gonna be uh, feasibility. So it just means that all of our equations need to be satisfied. So we're just gonna say GI of X minus B I is, um, is feasible. Okay, and that's going to apply to equations two and three, right here up above. Okay, now there's also another condition. This is a second condition for the KKT conditions, that no direction improves the objective and is also feasible. So we have this, um, this, this expression is then the gradient of our objective function at the optimal solution. So when we write um, this little asterisk, that just means optimal. Okay, and then uh, minus, and then we're going to introduce some variables called Lagrange multipliers, okay, which is the lambda i, and I'm also gonna put that at the optimal value, and then the gradient of gi of x, um, also x at the optimal conditions, has to equal zero. Okay, so it's the gradient of the objective function minus the summation of i equals one to number m. Okay, so that's gonna be all of our all of our equality and inequality constraints. And that's going to apply uh, on one to three. Okay, so all of these are gonna be used um, to generate this second condition. Okay, so let's go on to complementary slackness and positive Lagrange multipliers. These are gonna be only applicable to, um, actually it's gonna be number two. Okay, so just the inequality uh, constraints. But that what that says is that all of our Lagrange multipliers multiplied by that constraint at the optimal conditions has to equal zero. So either this one or that one uh, needs to equal zero at optimal conditions. Okay, so it means that if this is a binding constraint, meaning that if this one, you know, just this inequality constraint right here, if it's equal to zero, um, then uh, this is going to be zero, and then the Lagrange multiplier will tell us the um, incremental objective improvement that we can get by relaxing that constraint. So if we were able to change um, B, for example. Okay, now, we're not gonna worry about that in this one, just because we don't, we're gonna have an example problem where we won't have any uh, inequality constraints. Okay, um, so let's go on to the third one. Now this, this one, last one, is just that we all, we have positive uh, Lagrange multipliers. So at the optimal conditions, we're gonna have Lagrange multipliers greater than zero. Okay, so um, let's go down to an example problem. Okay, so we're going to, um, I'll come down here to this minimization. Okay, so we have an objective function, you know, three variables. And, uh, and then we also have two equations. Okay, so we have one extra degree of freedom. Uh, two equality constraints means that uh, you know, both of these have to be satisfied Okay, but we have one of these variables that can adjust to try to minimize this objective function right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and derive the, um, you know, the KKT conditions. So the first one, the first one that we're going to work with is that all of our, uh, all of our equations must be feasible. Okay, so we can just write those. We can just write those out uh, because those are our first two. Um, that we're gonna have. So x1 plus x2, uh, two times x2 minus x3. I'm just gonna put this in a standard form. Okay, so minus six 
equals zero. So I'm moving everything to the left hand side of the equation. Then I'll do 2x1. Um, I put the minus 2x2 plus 3x3 minus 12 equals zero. Okay, now um, let's go on to the second condition. Okay, so this was the uh, KKT uh, number one. Okay, now we're going to go on to KKT number two as well. Okay, so let's go back up and just remember what we had here. Um, so the gradient of the objective function minus the summation of these new variables, Lagrange multipliers, times the gradient um, of our constraints it has to equal zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and write those for our uh, sample problem here. And, and so we're going to have um, 4x1 minus Lagrange multiplier 1. Now the gradient with that, uh, with respect to x, okay, is good, just going to be 1. Um, and then minus Lagrange multiplier 2. So we go down to our second equation, and that's going to be a 2. So we just differentiate this with respect to x1, and then our second one with respect to x1 as well. And those are the gradients. Um, the differential, um, or the, the vari variable, or the equation differentiated with respect to that variable. Okay, so those are the two, um, and that is going to equal zero. Okay, and then we go down to the next one, which is 2x2 minus, uh, I'm going to put my lambda one there, and then take the derivative with respect to x2. So I'm just going to have that term right there. And then minus at lambda 2. And then I'm going to have a negative 2 right here. And that's got to equal 0 as well. OK, so now I go down to the third one. And then I'm going to have 8x3 minus lambda 1 times negative 1. Okay, so there's my negative one right there. And then minus lambda two, and then I'm going to have three, and that's going to equal zero. Okay, so now I have um, five equations and uh, five variables. So my five variables are x1, x2, x3, lambda one, and lambda two. Okay, I have these five variables and five equations. Uh, and so I can solve this just by doing setting this up in matrix form and then uh, just inverting that matrix. Okay, so let me set this up in in matrix form now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, just plug in okay, x1, x2, x3, lambda 1, and lambda 2. And I'll set that equal to the right-hand side. Okay, so I'm just going to fill these in. Um, zero, zero. I didn't have any um, you know, lambdas in these two. Okay, so I'm just going to have um, x1, 2, and 3. And 0, 0. Okay, 4, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2. 0, 2, 0, negative 2, and 2. And 0, 0, 8, 1, negative 3. Okay, and then I anything that wasn't multiplied by a variable, I put on the right hand side. Okay, and then uh, if you see this hint down here, uh, there is uh, my right, my left hand side, and I'm just going to invert that matrix, and there is my solution x. Okay, so we've solved this with the KKT conditions. And the, the nice thing about KKT conditions, if we have a quadratic um, objective and, uh, and then equality constraints, okay, so just equality um, constraints, then uh, this, the KKT conditions, um, just reduce down to a set of linear equations that if you have the same number of variables and equations, then you can just um, solve that with a matrix inversion. Okay, now in other cases, uh, we're going to have you know a nonlinear 
uh, objective function that may not be quadratic or other nonlinear equations here. And so what we typically do is uh, use a modified version of the KKT, KKT conditions to uh, form a search direction for something like a sequential quadratic programming where we form quadratic approximations of the problem and then sequentially solve those um, to get better and better search directions toward the solution. So let me just show um, how to solve that um, with the uh, uh, a solver. Okay, so we solve this with the KKT conditions, and this is great for showing showing the KKT conditions. Um, but let's let's just go ahead and uh, open up the the course website. Go to apmonitor.com, and uh, what I'm going to do is just scroll down to the optimization course. Okay, and then uh, additional examples on the KKT conditions can be found here under KKT conditions. Um, you know, with this worksheet and also the solution. Okay, so here's the solution to what we just covered today. Okay, um, but what I want to do is just back up um, just a little bit here. And I'm just going to come back to the apmonitor.com webpage and select um, solve optimization problems. And, and what I'm going to do is just put this same problem, I'm just going to put the same problem into um, this interface here. Okay, so make that just a little bit bigger. Put this over uh, to the side here. Okay, so, um, and let's see, I'll scroll over here just so I can have both of them on the same screen. So let's just solve this same problem with a solver like IPOPT or APOPT. So what I'll do is, is first of all, just um, erase whatever model was there. Okay, variables, and then I'll have x1, x2, and x3. And then I'll also have some equations as well. Now the first one is going to be to minimize um, 2 times x1 uh, squared plus um, x2 squared plus 4 times x3 squared. Okay, so there's my objective function. And then I'm also going to have some equations, x1 uh, plus x2 uh, two times x2 minus x3 equals 6. Okay, and then uh, 2 times x1 minus, uh, minus 2 times x2 uh, plus 3 times x3 equals 12. Okay, and then um, when I solve this, um, what's going to happen is a solution will appear down below and this gave us the same answer um, that we had uh, here on our sheet uh, when we solved the KKT conditions um, it gave us the same solution but we solved this numerically with a sequential quadratic programming solver and as you can see if you scroll down um, you know solved it uh, very quickly but it used the KKT conditions at their core to be able to solve this. I'll solve it with, for example, IPOP as well. Different solver, but it gave me um, the same solution results. Okay, so uh, just a brief tutorial on the KKT conditions for you know, additional material on this. Um, you know, just come back to the optimization website. Again, that's uh, apmonitor.com. And then if you just scroll down to optimization course, um, then you'll be able to see additional content. The content that we covered today was really just on this KKT conditions, but there's um, you know, a lot of other content on here as well. If you'd like to do a second tutorial, um, here's part two, which is a KKT conditions and inequality constraints. Okay, and then a second one with uh, a third one, I guess, in uh, with both inequality and equality constraints.